Would you like to come and be Caesar? Um, so there's been the most almighty clamor, clamor of thunder and lightning. I think at this point, would this have been written for the Curtain Theatre or the Globe? What, what we think about the Caesars, um, Julius Caesar may have been written for the opening of the Globe Theatre. There's something very spectacular about this play, and there's something Shakespeare's very proud of. So we have a play from the late 1590s. And we have a playwright who is getting towards his peak. And some people would argue this is his attempt to rival someone like Johnson, who's writing great classical um, tragedy in the form that the English reshape it. We've had a few other Roman plays. Titus Andronicus, a difficult play, as she would tell me. Um, he's also going to write Anthony and Cleopatra and Coriolanus. But there is something quite often awkward about this play and it's got a lot of long set speeches but Shakespeare's trying to do something here to I think to establish his reputation as a great classical writer uh -huh. whether he succeeds <laughs> is another question well I think it's pretty magnificent mm -hmm. myself but yeah I mean I mean interestingly didn't Ben Johnson say he had small Latin little Latin and less Greek, and less Greek. but Johnson used to Which harp is, about everybody yeah <laughs> It is professional jealousy, isn't it? A bit of a swipe. I think it's under the table. That's not. I wouldn't pay any attention because this is very classical and, yeah. So shall we just read it through and and see what we find here with the verse? Um, and I'll let you know if we run out of time. Okay. okay good. Thank you. Nor heaven nor earth have been at peace tonight. Thrice have Calpurnia in her sleep cried out, "Help! Ho! They murder Caesar." Who's within? My lord. Go bid the priests do present sacrifice and bring me their opinions of success. I will, my lord. What mean you, Caesar? Think you walk? Think you to walk forth? You shall not stir out of your house today. Okay, sorry, but that's quite forceful. Yeah. You shall not. Okay. Um, so she's giving him an order. <laughs> so what kind of a, you know, meek, traditional wife is that? <laughs> okay. What mean you, Caesar? Think you? Think you to walk forth? You shall not stir out of your house today. Caesar shall forth the things that threatened me. Ne'er looked but on my back when they shall see the face of Caesar, they are vanished. Caesar, I never stood on ceremonies, yet now they fright me. There is one within, besides these things that we have heard and seen, recounts most horrid sights seen by the watch. A lioness hath whelped in the streets. I think that must be whelped. A lioness whelped. hath whelped in the streets. Yeah. A lioness hath whelped in the streets, and graves have yawned and yielded up their dead. Fierce, fiery warriors fraught upon the clouds, in ranks and squadrons and right form of war, which drizzled blood upon the capital. The noise of battle hurtled in the air, horses did neigh and dying men did groan. And I'm ghosts... I'm going to stop you there, sorry. sorry. So this, horses did neigh, that's not an iambic pentameter, is it? That's mm -hmm. a trochee there, that's... In inverse of the, the trochee, I think of as it, I always call it trekkie because it's instead of da dum da dum, it's da dum da dum. Da -dum. So you're tracking, right? Okay. <laughs> right. That's uh, the other ways to remember these kind of metric feet is um, a dactyl is sounds like the, the Greek name for a finger, and on a finger, your your joints are long, short, short, and that's what a dactyl beat is. Da, da, da. And that is the beat of Homer, isn't it? That's the metric foot of Homer. Da, 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 da. It sounds like a sort of boat on the waves. Mm -hmm. Anyway, sorry. Um, <laughs> that's a bit of a red herring. But um, horses did, did neigh and dying men did groan. You know, roll with it when the rhythm goes against the iambic pentameter and mm -hmm. sort of flowers into something else because that's, yeah, that's yeah. where the, the energy is. Mm -hmm. The noise of battle hurtled in the air, horses did neigh and dying men did groan, and ghosts did shriek and squeal about the streets. O oh, Caesar, these things are beyond all use, and I do fear them. That was very interesting because the alliteration of these things, your emotion broke on those yeah. sounds. Do you see how it happened? Mm -hmm. You're very good with them. You're doing great. <laughs> what can be avoided? Whose end is purpose? Mm -hmm. Whose end is purpose by the mighty gods? 
Yet Caesar shall go forth for these predictions, are to the world in general as to Caesar. When beggars die, there are no comets seen. The heavens themselves blaze forth the deaths of princes. Okay, we'll just go back over that. So, what can be avoided whose end is purposed by the mighty gods? I mean, mm -hmm. what's the point of not going, you know, because it's all written by the gods. Yet, Caesar shall go forth, for these predictions are to the world in general, as to Caesar. Mm -hmm. Are we sure that's as there, or should be not to Caesar? I don't have my tests. So okay. Just, okay. What, I, what he's essentially saying is that for everybody, it doesn't necessarily mean me. Mm -hmm. They're not signs just for me. And then she says, but when beggars die, the heavens don't make a, a sign. These kind of big signs in the, in, in the sky mm -hmm. are for big people like you. That's her answer. <laughs> so start that again. What can be avoided? What can be avoided whose end is purposed by the mighty gods? Yet Caesar shall go forth, for these predictions are to the world in general as to Caesar. When beggars die, there are no comets seen. The heavens themselves blaze forth the death of princes. <coughs> Cowards, oh, sorry. Cowards die many times before their deaths. The valiant never taste of death but once. Of all the wonders that I yet have heard, it seems to me most strange that men should fear seeing that death a necessary end will come when it will come. Good. What say the augurists? They would not have you to stir forth today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, try that again, but cooler. Okay. It's the same thing again. Try and remain cool and let the alliteration, which you're very good at, and mm -hmm. the assonance, have the heat. So just your voice. Don't have it in your body because you you tend to do that. Yeah, I do that right? a lot. And actually, what it does is it weakens um, the power of the emotion. Right? Let your body just be relaxed and just say what he wrote, and you will find it very powerful. Okay. Okay. Are we going from the very beginning? No, just from that Caesar. I never stood on ceremony. Notice that that also is not a um, regular iambic pentameter line at all. Mm -hmm. Right. It's too long, isn't it? Mm. It's not Caesar, I never stood, or Sarah and Romy's. I mean, it doesn't fit. But so she's... Basically, a lot of the time, when these lines are irregular, you don't really know why until they're in your mouth and you say them and you play them and you play around with them. And sometimes you have to rehearse them a few times until they come out and you go, ah, mm -hmm. that is what it is. And then once you've fixed it, you, then you know. But you have to use your instinct and everything and, and the physicality of the words in your mouth. Caesar, I never stood on ceremonies, yet now they fright me. There is one within, besides the things that we have heard and seen, recounts most horrid sights seen by the watch. A lioness hath whelped in the streets, and graves have yawned and yielded up their dead. Fi fierce, fiery warriors brought, fraught upon the clouds. Okay, again, that line again. Fierce, fiery. Fierce, yeah. fierce, fiery warriors fought upon the clouds, in ranks and squadrons and right form of war, which drizzled blood upon the capital. The noise of battle hurtled in the air. Horses did neigh. That was the line that was difficult. It was like in Trocky. So is, is it... Well, horses quite did easy. a lot of them actually. I mean, a lot of them are horses. Did nay is in Trekkie, yes, mm -hmm. but also, I mean, fierce, fiery warriors fought upon. You know, these are all quite. These are. She's talking about wild things happening. You know, it's the wild hunt up in there. You know, I mean, it's it's all a bit irregular. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so just roll with it. Yes, horses did neigh. Mm -hmm. The noise of battle hurtled in the air. Horses did neigh and dying men did groan. And ghosts did shriek and squeal about the streets. O oh, Caesar, these things are beyond all use and I do fear them. Okay, we'll just stop there. <laughs> now, you're doing really well, by the way. <laughs> so I'm just giving you more and more to work on yeah. so that we can all see. We have about five minutes. Okay. This is really important. In Hamlet, he comes in to talk to the players when, who arrive at the Palace of Elsinore, and he says, you're going to do a play. 
and then he tells them how to perform it. And this, everybody says, and my father, my father always used to say, this is as close as we get to hearing what Shakespeare thought good acting was. And one of the, so Hamlet says to the players, speak the speech I pray you as I pronounced it to you, trippingly on the tongue. Uh, I can't remember the whole thing, so I'm not going to recite the whole thing. But he basically says, don't saw the air with your hands. That's So, you know, hammy actors going over the top. And, <laughs> um, and uh, but tripping me on the tongue this, and sme is speaking smoothly. Right? Now, you're doing really well with this. If you give it a, again, if you do it again now, <laughs> and do it a little bit smoother, don't jack the words. Don't overemphasize. Okay. Right? Because it doesn't. It doesn't make it sound more meaningful. It doesn't make it sound. You know, when you when you overemphasize, you know, sort of hammer on the words. It doesn't make it sound more true. Um, it's just more difficult to receive. Mm -hmm. So having thought when you're working on a speech or whatever, if you you know analyze everything, the trochees and the anapes and the dactyls and all, we're not going to do that now. And then do it trippingly on the tongue with a certain swiftness and smoothness. Then you get, then that's the real thing. So <laughs> have a go. Have a go. Caesar, I never stood on ceremonies, yet now they fright me. There is one within besides the things that we have heard and seen, recounts most horrid sights seen by the watch. A lioness hath whelped in the streets, and graves have yawned and yielded up their dead. Fierce, fiery warriors fought upon the clouds, in ranks and squadrons and right form of war, which drizzled blood upon the capital. The noise of battled, battle hurdled, turtled in the air. Horses did neigh and sh sorry, horses did neigh and dying men did groan, and ghosts did shriek and squeal upon the streets. O oh, Caesar, these things are beyond all use, and I do fear them. Good. We're going to finish on that. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Very well done. Very well done. Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Professor Grace Iapola, University of Reading, Department of English. I'm a professor of Shakespearean and early modern drama. I'm very, very grateful always to have a theater practitioner and someone as brilliant as Jenny come in and talk to my students. Um, I want to thank all of you. We're from the School of Literature and Languages. I think it's important for us to understand that we take Shakespeare off the page and into performance. I want to thank you so much for participating, and I'm so grateful that we received funding from our Center for um, the CQSD Center, and I'm hoping that we make this an annual event. This is our second workshop, yes, and we thank would like all. to do it again, and um, we thank you very much for attending. Thank you. <laughs> and can we give Jenny a round of applause, please? Thank you. Well done. Very well done.